when it comes to starting a YouTube channel, it's very easy to start going down rabbit holes on YouTube to find out what you need to do to grow. But sometimes what we need are the absolute basics, like how to upload a video correctly onto the YouTube platform. So in this video today, I'm going to be sharing how I upload my videos and how I use all of the options that YouTube have given me to make sure I try and optimize the video as well as I can to make sure that it gets seen and pushed out to the people that I want to be able to see it. Now, I'm still fairly new in learning this, but I've done lots and lots of courses and training. And whilst there are nuances to uploading your video, like the wording that you use in your title, what you put on your thumbnail, the, the description and the words that you use in your description, that's all for another video. Today, I'm literally just going to go step by step through the process of uploading your video. Also, over the last five weeks, I've been really analyzing and keeping a track of my YouTube growth analytics. I've had this channel for over a year, but I've only recently started looking at the analytics. So I'm going to share my week five results with you. And by the end of this video, you should know exactly how to upload a video and have a little bit of an understanding of the types of data that are going to be useful to you going forward. Hi, welcome back. I'm Bev. I'm a Gen X YouTube creator, and I'm also a coach working with midlife women who are going through that kind of messy middle that we go through in the midlife transition. And I've been trying to grow my YouTube channel now, as I say, for over a year. It's not my first channel, but I've played around with it in the past, and I've never really taken it that seriously in terms of growing. And it's only recently that I've really knuckled down and started to produce more intentional content, more consistent content, and also tracking those analytics. So before we get onto the numbers, I'm going to move over onto the computer and show you how I upload a video. If you want to just go to the analytics, I'll put timestamps down into the description for you, and I will see you over on the computer. Okay, so the first thing to realize is that there are two different apps. You have your YouTube app here, which is where you can watch videos and search for videos, basically use it as you would a social media platform. And if you click into your YouTube, you can go up to this little area up here in the top right hand corner, click the plus button and you can upload a video here. And this is how I normally do it, but I want to show you that you also have a second app that you need if you are creating content on YouTube, and it's called YouTube Studio. So you can get to it down here, if I just move me out of the way, down the left hand side here, you can find YouTube Studio, we can click into it here, or I use a Chrome extension that puts all my shortcuts on my desktop, I'm not talking about that today, but I've got the YouTube Studio app here, and if I click here, it opens the YouTube Studio in the same way as it did before. I'm just going to move me over here actually. So it doesn't really matter which way you go, you can upload from YouTube itself or from YouTube Studio, but for today I'm going to keep it in YouTube Studio because I'm going to be showing you my analytics and they're accessed through YouTube Studio. So let's get rid of one of those. So in order to upload a video, if it's your very first video, you obviously won't have anything here on your dashboard. We're in channel dashboard here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, because I've got my video that is ready to go, I'm just going to go and find it in my downloads. And before I do anything, this one's just called Untitled Recording. I've just recorded it in StreamYard. What I want to do is optimize the title or the, the file name so that it is keyword rich. I'm just going to rename this file before I do anything else with it. And I'm going to call it how to upload a video to YouTube. And the reason I'm calling it that is because that's what I expect somebody might search when they're looking for a video on how to upload a video to YouTube. So now that I've renamed it, I'm back in the YouTube studio. I'm gonna click on create. Let me just move my face out of the way. I'm gonna click upload video and I'm gonna select the video. And this is the one here that I've just renamed, how to upload a video to YouTube. I'm gonna highlight that and click open. And now YouTube is just 
uploading that video you can see it happening here and it, while it's doing that I'm just going to start adding some details to optimize this upload now how to upload a video to YouTube is the name of the file and YouTube has automatically pulled that through but I might not want to call it that in fact I want to use similar keywords but perhaps not the same thing so we're capturing a little bit more SEO or search engine optimization or keywords in here that hopefully people will search for upload your first YouTube video a guide for complete beginners the next thing we want to do is to tell viewers what this video is about in the description and again you want to make it very relevant to what we're talking about so I might write something like so in this video I'm teaching absolute beginners just getting started on their YouTube channel how to upload a video and optimize it so that it stands the best chance of being suggested to their ideal audience and I might also in this section add any links that I might want people to um, have access to so it could be links to another video that I want to talk about that maybe I've mentioned in my video it might be a link to join my newsletter it might be a link to visit my website it could be a link to book a call with me whatever you want to add in you can add in to the description and it will use hyperlinks so if you've got the web address in there it will create a hyperlink you can also add chapter markers or timestamps and I will do that normally at the end once I've got all of the other details put in I will go through my video and select where the chapter uh, headings are going to be we'll come back to that in a moment or two you also want to upload a thumbnail you want your thumbnail to be nice and clear easy to read and again using one or two keywords from your title or your description that explain what the video is about so I'm just going to click on this square here upload file and I'm going to I haven't created the thumbnail for this one yet so I'm just going to pick a YouTube thumbnail that I've created in the in the past uh, just to show you how it's done so I can add just one thumbnail if I want to or YouTube now has the op the option to be able to test three up to three different thumbnails at the same time and to do that you'd have just chosen let me just change that there's three little dots here so I could test and compare and it'll give me the option to pull up to three different thumbnails and YouTube will show each of those thumbnails in rotation and it will give you feedback on which one got the best results but for today I'm just going to stick with the one thumbnail so ignore all of this AI thumbnail builder I have vidIQ installed so the other thing you want to do is when you upload your thumbnail make sure that you also optimize the file name for the thumbnail to reflect what's in your video as well that's another opportunity to, for YouTube to get a little bit more information about what the video is about coming down we can choose a playlist now if it's your very first YouTube video you may not have a playlist and that's fine or you can create a new playlist so I've got a number of playlists that I've already created or if I wanted to I could create a new playlist here and you get the option here to add a, a name for the playlist so perhaps this might be just my just getting started playlist you can give a little bit of a description about what it's about I'm going to choose how to tutorials and click done you can have more than one playlist selected I've just chosen the one so now we're going to keep moving down it's really important that you complete this bit here yes it's made for kids or no it's not made for kids now my video is perfectly suitable for kids there's nothing in here that would be seen as unsuitable however I'm not making it for children so I'm going to click no it's not made for kids and the reason being YouTube restricts who that video is shown to if it's made for kids and also I think if I'm right if 
uh, as time goes on, you can't be monetized for made for kids, I don't believe. And also, I think it limits comments and things like that. So basically, unless you're making specific content for children, click no, it's not made for kids. As we come down, it's not going to be a paid promotion. So we leave that blank. This one's an important one. This is to do with AI altered content. So if any of your video is made using AI that gives any confusion about whether something is real or not, you have to declare it. So if you're using AI to generate fake images, for example, you need to declare that. If you've used ChatGPT to help you script your video, or maybe you've used vidIQ or something like that to help generate a thumbnail, that's not classed as content that is being altered uh, for the purposes of YouTube. So we're just going to tick no. And then as we come down, it's entirely up to you. You can tick automatic chapters if you want to, and YouTube will decide when the chapter markers need to go in. These are sort of timestamps to give people warning, if you like, in the description of where the different subtopics are mentioned within your video. I sometimes allow automatic chapters, especially for podcast type content. But if it's a, a how-to tutorial or a tips or something like that, I will untick this and I will go through and I will manually add my timestamps. If you're vlogging or something like that and you're visiting specific places, this will allow the AI features in YouTube to automatically identify those places for you. I don't. I normally untick that. Automatic concepts, I normally leave in. This is quite useful if you're using terms that people might not understand. The AI will give a little bit of a description about what those terms are. And I just think it's useful. So I leave that turned on. When we come down to tags, tags aren't massively important in terms of getting found, but it does give really useful information to YouTube about what your content is about so they know where to put it. So um, I've got some tags in here that I set up when I originally set my channel up as default tags. I tend to put my name in and I'm just going to take out some of these that aren't relevant. Actually, I've just changed my YouTube content type, so a lot of these won't be relevant. I might go in and redo my defaults. So I do talk to women over 40. I do talk to women over 50. I'm going to take out my business names. Uh, it's not about starting a business in later life. It is for midlife women though. Um, and I might put in uh, Gen X creators as well. But we want the tags to relate to what the video is about. You don't just have to use one or two words. You can actually use full sentences. So things like how to upload videos to YouTube, optimize video uploads on YouTube. And you just separate it with a comma and that's your tag added. And you can see down here, I've used 149 of 500 characters. I would suggest that you try and use all of the characters available to you. I just think if YouTube have given you 500 characters, they've done that for a reason. So we might as well use them. So I ignore these two. I don't put a caption certificate in there. I normally just leave that as none. I do normally put the recording date. So that will be today's date. And I do normally put my video location and I'm in the United Kingdom. So I'm just going to click there. Moving down. I always or normally tend to change the license to Creative Commons Attribution. There are two types of licenses. Standard YouTube license means that nobody else can use your content without YouTube flagging it up to you to say that they've used it without your permission. If you click Creative Commons Attribution, you're giving other people on YouTube permission to reuse your content but attribute it to you. Now, my understanding from what I've researched is that it's good if you want to grow 
to click the Creative Commons attribution. This enables other people to share your content. And as we want people to find us, having my content shared doesn't seem like such a bad thing. But you might not want it. And if you don't, leave it as standard YouTube license. That's the default. But I normally change mine to Creative Commons. I allow embedding and I allow it to publish to my subscription feed and notify my subscribers. I can't think of many reasons why you wouldn't do that unless you had a very, very specific niche and you were about to record and publish a video that had nothing to do with that niche. And maybe you don't want your subscribers to get that video because it isn't in line with what they're expecting to get. That's the only thing I can think of why you wouldn't have this published to subscriptions feed ticked. Uh, shorts remixing, that's basically saying, as far as I'm aware, that you're allowing other people to use parts of your content in their shorts. And you, you've got various options here. I normally just allow video and audio remixing. From here, we're going to go and choose the category. And this is really important to let YouTube know what sort of category you are your, your video falls into and some of them might overlap but go for the one that feels most aligned. So this is how to upload a, a YouTube video. So I'm going to go and choose, oh it's already highlighted there, sorry my webcam is in the way of where I'm looking so I have to keep kind of looking around the side. So I'm going to click how to and style. Just going to move my camera for a second because I can't see what's on my screen. Do we want to allow comments? I would always allow comments. Uh, you get to choose here, do you want to hold them for moderation? Do you want to just hold potentially inappropriate comments? Um, you get various options here. So I normally just ba uh, use basic, hold potentially inappropriate comments. And this is saying, do you want your videos, uh, do you want the comments rather to be sorted by the top comment? the one that's had perhaps the most uh, interaction or the newest? I don't touch that, I just leave it as top. Um, show how many viewers like this video. You get the option to turn that on or off. I always leave it on. And that's basically everything that you need to do on that very first details page. Moving to the next page, we can add an end screen. Now an end screen is really helpful for getting somebody to not just watch your video, but to watch the next video coming. Now, if this is your first video and you don't have a second video, you can always link to somebody else's video from a different channel that perhaps has relevance to the video that you've just created. And that's not a problem. Obviously it's better to have your own video, but if you don't have one, it doesn't matter, just have a an end screen so that what that does is if somebody allows that um, video to run on or clicks on the, the next video that you've suggested, that lets YouTube know that people are interested in what you're delivering and they're watching it to the end and they're continuing to stay on the platform. So whilst it's not ideal to have somebody else's video there, it's better than having nothing. So if you can add an end screen and the way you do that, you just come here, click add and it will have brought up your video. Uh, there's various templates here. So you may have a your latest video and a subscribe link, one video and a subscribe. That's not necessarily the latest video you get to choose. I never do that actually. All I do is I click on element I click on video. I normally only give one option and then I come down here and I choose a specific video. If you leave here most recent upload, YouTube will take the very last video that you created before this one. Or if you click best for viewer, YouTube will decide based on this content what it thinks the viewer is going to want to watch of your stuff next. But I like to be in control. Maybe I'm a control freak. So I click choose specific video. This is this has brought up some of my videos. It hasn't brought all of them. If there was a specific one I wanted and it wasn't there, I'd just go and search up here. And this is where you can choose videos from other channels. So I'm just going to click this one. 11 easy steps for stress-free video creation. 
And if we come down here to the timeline, we can decide where we want it to go. I think it defaults to the last 20 seconds of your video, but you can make it shorter. So what that looks like, if I just click on the timeline around about here, and if I click play, and then you can see the end screen video, the next suggested video comes up here and you've got some boundaries that you have to stay within, but you can move this around depending on where you want it to show. I also then add another element and I add a subscribe button. I've already set this up in my, when I set my channel up and this just gives a little button here that allows people to click and subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you did right now while we're thinking about it and I just moved that along so it comes in just a second or two probably even a split second after the video so if I just go over to here and show you that again there you go so now I've got my end screen video and my end screen subscribe button and I'm just going to click save if you've mentioned any other videos that you want to link to, you can do them as a card. Sometimes you'll see in a video, people will say, and if you're interested, you know, watch this video, I'll pin it up here or whatever. This is where they're putting those cards in. And very similar to where we add the end screen, we can go to any point in our video where we might mention another video and we can click on the timeline and we can add either a, a video, a playlist, a channel. If we are in the partner program, i.e. we've um, got over a thousand subscribers and more than 4,000 watch hours in the last 12 months and we've joined the YouTube partner program, we can actually put hyperlinks in there. So if we had a product or a digital download that we wanted to offer, we could put it as a link. For now, if I'm just going to show you, maybe I'm going to add a video and let's say I talk about how to be the guide rather than the guru and I'm going to flag it here and you can see that's the video just showing there. And then we just hit save and there we go. If you want to add subtitles, if you've got a, a subtitle text file, you can do. I'll be honest, I don't, but you would just add the file here. So I'm just going to X out of that one. Um, and discard changes. So we've got our end screen, we've got our cards. Just going to click next. This is showing that it's uploaded now. So it's uploaded in HD. There weren't any issues found. Checks complete. Uh, no copyright issues here. Next, we get to choose whether this video is private, unlisted, public or if we want to schedule it out into the future. So with a private video, that means only you can see it. I tend to upload everything private until I'm absolutely certain it's ready to go. Unlisted means that anybody with the link can watch. So if you were putting a video into maybe a course program or something like that, where you wanted only certain people to be able to see it, you would click unlisted. And then if you want it to be visible by everybody on the platform, you would click to public. You can also set your public video as a premiere. And that what that will do is it will inform people that the video is coming out. And when you run it as a premiere, you could be watching it and having a chat in the comments with your audience at the same time. I've never done a premiere, so I, can't really tell you how that works in practice, uh, but it's there as an option if you want to. Or you can schedule it into the future. So if we just come down to schedule and we click here, we can decide when it's going to go out. Now, what I tend to do is I will, if I'm, if I'm about ready to publish, what I will normally do is publish 15 to 20 minutes, maybe half an hour into the future. And that gives me time to just double check that everything is uploaded as I want it to. And I'll watch the video back through, just make sure everything is fine. And if it isn't, I will cancel the schedule and make it private until I go back and do any repairs that I need to do in the upload. And then as soon as it, 
hits the scheduled time, YouTube will automatically make that video public. And then all we need to do is I'm just going to make sure that this one is private still. I'm not going to schedule it because it's just a test. And uh, then I'm just going to hit save. And you can see here, this video is only visible to you. So I hope that was helpful in teaching you how to upload your video if you've never done it before. What I'm going to do now is just go, while I'm in my YouTube studio, I'm just going to click on analytics and I'm just going to give you my week five analytics update. So here in my YouTube studio is where all my analytics are. Um, you can go really, really deep with this. I'm only going to be looking at my analytics for the last seven days so I can change the time period up here. And then I'm going to look at the various different elements that I'm analyzing by clicking on my spreadsheet. Now I've already done the analytics, so I'm cheating a little bit. I'm just gonna go through with you what they look like for this week. So this is my YouTube analytics spreadsheet. And I have to say my numbers aren't good. <laughs> They're not great this week, uh, which is disappointing, but hey, it is what it is. And I want to be as open and as honest as I can about what's happening. So the analytics or the data that I keep track of are my views, my watch time, my average view duration. That's how long people stay watching a um, video on average. My click-through rate, how many times people click on my thumbnail uh, to watch the video. My total number of subscribers, any new subscribers I've had in the last seven days. The percentage of my videos that were found through so YouTube suggesting them, through people browsing their homepage, through actually searching for content and my content coming up, and also my impressions. And I'm going to quickly go through each of these for the week. And I'm going to have to move my webcam again. Let me hold it here. You can see here that I've got definitely more red than I have green. Red means my percentages are down. Green means they're up. So I really want to see more green than red. And unfortunately, that's not what's happened this week. So my views overall for the last seven days have gone down. They've been steadily going down since I had a bit of a, a, a booster week here in week two. I'm in week five now. I need to get to the bottom of why. That's the thing with data. It's all right having the data, but you then have to figure out what it means uh, and the implications and what I'm going to do about it. So basically, my views are down by 52.5%. My watch time is also down by 69%, which isn't good. That means people aren't watching my content for as long and I'm trying really hard to get my watch hours up. So that's not good. My average view duration as well is down. That means people aren't staying on my videos for as long. So maybe I've got a bit boring. Maybe I've changed. I know I have changed the, the type of content I'm putting out. So maybe that's just a blip because uh, it's going out to an audience that is expecting something else. Uh, but that average view duration is down by 32, nearly 33%. My click-through rate is marginally up, but very, very little. I think it's a 9% increase on last week. Not great. The click-through rate is the amount of times people clicked on the video when it was shown to them. And, and the impressions are give an indicator of how many times it was shown to people. We'll come on to that in a moment. My total number of subscribers has gone up uh, by 12. I never quite understand how these numbers aren't the same. I haven't got to the bottom of this. But my new subscribers this week is 10. So YouTube Analytics is telling me I've got 10 new subscribers, but actually it's showing 12. Don't understand that. I'm happy to have new subscribers and yes, some of the stats are down, but my subscriber count is still growing and I'm very grateful for that. Interestingly, where people are finding me, all of this has gone up. So, you know, YouTube showing my videos in suggested, which is when other people are watching a video and they're offered something that is similar. 
Um, so I've got a 7.5% increase in the number of my videos suggested. Up in browse as well, it's 16.32. That means that um, it was shown in the home feed. And then also YouTube search has gone up by 54.3%, which might tell me that I'm getting better at titling my videos in a way that people might be offered them if they search for a particular thing. In terms of my content, the reason maybe some of the, the views are down, the watch time is down, could be because I've actually created fewer videos this week. So I only created three videos. I did create one short. Shorts aren't as part of my strategy, but it's quite easy you using a bit of software called Opus Clip to chop up a longer video into shorts. So I've done that. I wouldn't be creating shorts from scratch because I don't have the time, but I, Opus Clip makes it quite easy. Sometimes they kick out some rubbish. Often they're, they're good enough for shorts and shorts, I think are pretty good for increasing your subscriber count. So if it's not a lot of hassle, I'll do it. So I've actually created one short. I haven't done any lives this week, although we are going live on Saturday. I'm really excited about that. If you're around at seven o'clock UK, myself and three other GenX creators who all have fairly new channels, although we have got one lady who's a bit more established, are going to be sharing their YouTube journey. So it'll be a really good night. I think it'll be a great conversation. So my total content for the week is only four pieces of content, which is quite uh, a lot lower. If you look at my uh, best week, I put out 10 pieces of content and, you know, it, it is going down. So perhaps that's the reason, perhaps more content equals more views. All in all, down across the board. And I guess if we see the numbers going down, it could be easy to get despondent and think, oh, what's the point? But it's just data. And all it's doing is giving me some feedback that I can work with. I am not quitting on this channel. I will grow. <laughs> that's my promise. So there you go. That's my analytics for this week. I hope you found it useful. And if you did find value in this, I would really love it if you could give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments, have you uploaded your first video yet? And if you haven't, what's stopping you? Go on, you know how to do it now. Until next time, take care.